I had the pleasure of speaking with Scott Brochard. He's the chief marketing officer over at HomeCleanse, and you're gonna get to learn a little bit more about mold and how it can affect your health, your homes, and most importantly, you're gonna learn about how he uses Thrive Architect and Thrive Suite to capture leads and build and create stunning, beautiful websites. Hope you enjoy it. Great, so I'm thrilled to have uh, Scott Brochart here with me. He's the chief marketing officer for Home Cleanse, um, as uh, a business that has been built with uh, Thrive Suite. I think it's probably, you're gonna correct me if I'm wrong, Scott, but it, I think that so far I, I've spoken to uh, six customers this year, and this is probably the biggest business out of all of the customers that I've spoken so far uh, in terms of numbers, but we'll get to that in a little um, in a little, well, in a, a, a little later. Um, I like just handing over the microphone to our guests and giving them two to three minutes to introduce themselves. So why don't you tell us a little bit about, about a little bit more about who you are, Scott, and uh, what it is that you do at Home Cleanse? Sure thing. Um, so Home Cleanse is a nationwide um, mold remediation company at its core. Um, we deal with people who are sensitive and sick and have underlying issues causing them to be sick to toxic mold exposure. Um, we started out as a small company in New Jersey and over the last couple of years have expanded nationwide and, and have continued to grow as we've seen the demand. You know, we've worked with homes across the country from people with minor issues all the way up to pretty major celebrities that we've dealt with in the past. Uh, a little bit about me, uh, I am actually, uh, as CMO of the company, um, prior to that, I actually was, um, in my past life, I was a political operative, so I actually traveled the country working on political campaigns um, on every level from local city council all the way up to presidential races. Uh, oh, wow. And then essentially that over time led to my segue into into marketing where every stop along the way I have continued to learn uh, throughout, just basically try to learn as many different techniques and traits and educate myself along the way and here I am in the position I'm in now and you know we're growing a company year over year tremendously we're doing amazing things pushing the envelope we push the envelope in our industry and we're going to keep pushing it forward and that's where we are that is so interesting to me um I we're obviously not going to get into politics but as someone that loves marketing I love politics because I just love uh, the different stories that get told from all of these different angles and how effectively a uh, political, you know, political um, activists are, are uh, able to tell those stories. I, I'm I, I really that's that's a big change for you, though. How did you go from politics to to home cleanse? Well, well, think of it this way. I, I found myself, you know, trying to market a person to to groups of people that didn't want to be marketed to. <laughs> so I'm trying to make a unattractive candidate look attractive and collect votes. So in time, it was basically a natural progression. Um, when I was I was working on a presidential campaign in 2008, when my body basically said, you know, you can't do this anymore. You know, I, my body shut down. I, that, you know, I went up going to the hospital, had underlying issues, and I was told if I didn't change my life and how I was living by the time I was 35, I'd have a heart attack. So, God. Obviously, I, I heeded that advice and kind of segmented and moved on. And that that kind of led me down a natural path towards marketing and just kept powering forward. Huh. Politics is that intense. It's it's that rough. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're going in on the campaign side. You're essentially going, you know, you're working 10, 12 hour days for six to eight months straight. And then you have that couple of month lull where you do nothing in between campaigns and it starts back up and you know, you're traveling across the country. If you're a good operative, you're moving across the country from state to state doing different things. So there's always, uh, you know, it's, it's stressful. Put, putting yeah. It, it sounds stressful. Yeah. So sure. let me ask you prior to working at home cleanse, did you, were you in charge of web design and development at some of these political campaigns or other businesses? Uh, when was your first yeah, what, when was your first uh, introduction to uh, WordPress, for example? So, so I, I've been designing websites on and off since 1995. Um, you know, I started making websites via AOLs, backend platform, building different 
building one for my high school band that I was in, building a personal website back in the day, um, going through all, all sorts of different stuff. And it was actually websites that led me into politics, strangely enough. So my, my town in, in 2000, I think 2001, did not have a municipal website. So here I was, an aspiring web developer. I, was, I offered them to make a website for free. I was like, hey, wait, make, let me, if you don't have a website, let me make you this website. And in turn, if you like it, pay me to update it. I'll hand it over to you. Nice. Did that eventually open up some doors for you? Oh, no. It, it, the, the inverse happened. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, basically, what happened was I, was I met with the mayor and the council, and they loved the idea. They thought it was great, that it was a local resident. It was a feel-good story. And then I get down this path. I designed this website. A couple of months later, I read in the local newspaper that my town offered to pay some local design company in another town twenty thousand dollars to build a website. And I oh God! That. What you know? What the hell moment? So, <laughs> that led me down a path of frustration. That led me down to getting involved in politics because I was getting frustrated <laughs> with these people. Why would they do this to me? So they were one party. I went down. I basically aligned myself with the other party. Got involved in campaigns. In three years, we booted them all out, um, and then I was on my way. <laughs> Lesson learned. Uh, always charge. <laughs> always charge up front. Going back, to your, going back to your WordPress question, my first WordPress website that I actually built was my wedding website in 2012. It was like okay. an engagement website. I didn't want one of those, you know, Scott and Gina dot the knot forward slash dates in a terrible URL. Uh -huh. So like I went out and I put together a nice URL. I think it was Gina and Scott tie the knot dot com. And nice. I was like, you know what? I, I used to do this. I can figure this out. Let me get back into this. And that kind of like planted the seed again in my head. I'm like, I kind of miss doing this. This is fun. So, How'd you build it? Uh, it was it was simplicity. It was WordPress. I found a wedding theme. There were elements of it that I didn't like. So I just started, I basically retaught myself, you know, CSS and started going through and just changed elements of it and made it look the way I wanted. And that was it. And when did you discover Thrive Themes? Well, I discovered Thrive Themes probably, let's see, when was it? Basically, it was right when Thrive Architect was rebranded from Thrive Page Builder. Thrive Content Builder. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Content Builder. Was right around that time. Sadly, I found it nefariously. Um, I was trying to find a good front-end page builder uh, for WordPress. And I landed on a nulled version of Thrive Architect, the original one, uh, mm -hmm. off of a YouTube video that someone found, that someone had shared to me. I was like, oh, this seems pretty cool. So I downloaded that, used it. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Went up building a, um, a website for a local pizzeria off of it. And then quickly realized, I'm like, hey, I, I need this in my life. So I became a subscriber and started powering forward. And essentially, any site that I built now is built with Thrive Deeps. Um, I would imagine that all of the sites that you're building right now, including home cleanse is also using other thrive suite components. Like are you using thrive theme builder, for example? Absolutely. Yeah. Every, and every site that we build now is thrive is, is based on a thrive theme. So people are going to be looking at overlays of, of home cleanse.com, for example, right now, as we're speaking. And I have to say, I love the design and I can tell that you like you're a designer. So I have to ask you. Do you, when you're thinking about, okay, I'm I have to build homecleanse.com, do you automatically start building uh, the site with Thrive Architect or do you first go through a stage of designing it in Figma or XD or do you just get right to it? So I, I, I tend to get right to it. I, I don't like wasting time, you know, and, and to me, I, I, you know, not that Figma is a waste of time when you're dealing with larger companies and there's a lot of oversight and a lot of opinions. Figma is a tremendous tool. Um, to me, we're you know a smaller design company, so essentially I drew it out in my head. Um, you know, we had a, uh, a branding consultant that we were working with at the time, so we were constantly spitballing ideas back and forth, and this was kind of the the foundation of what we came up with. And we just kept editing and moving things, and essentially we came up with that design. So we found different elements that we liked, and we just said, all right, let's let's put this all together. Here's what we're looking for. Let's make this happen. And did you start working off of uh, pre-designed templates, or did you build it completely from from scratch? Yeah, it's, I, I, I think I've been using the the quick one, I believe. I'm not sure uh -huh. which one I used for this one. It could be wrong. Um, 
on the on a previous iteration. So this is actually the second iteration of the Hong Kong site. Um, okay. We, as a company, we were initially called All American Restoration. Um, and then in 2022, we, we rebranded to Home Cleanse, and essentially I migrated everything from, at the time, what was a Divi built site, into into Thrive, and I forget which template I used. It was kind, of, it was a little a little too cookie cutter ish, so that led us down a path of you know let's do this the right way. If we're really going to grow and scale this business, we need to have a unique site. So we kind of went away from a theme per se and kind of adjusted a few things and and went from there. So let's talk a little bit more about home cleanse as a business. Um, I'm I'm actually someone that's been fortunate enough to not have to deal with mold yet so far in every apartment where I've lived, or at least that I know of, because I, I've read over the the website and I know that mold is pretty much invisible sometimes. Like it might be there and you may not even notice it. Um, there is a section here on the homepage where there is an image of a bathtub. And there's like little yellow dots that are showing you off where could mold potentially be hidden. So I have a couple of questions here. Um, sure. First of all, from a technical standpoint, how'd you do the, the, the effect here where you've got yellow dots and then when you hover over them, you've got this little uh, tooltip that shows up because I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, so, so that was actually a plugin that, that I found. We were going through it at the time I was working with the developer um, to kind of help me with some of the advanced coding that I'm not capable of. And we were going through, and we, we, we knew we wanted to do this design, and that was a big part of it, because at the end of the day, people don't, like you said, people don't realize how simply, how easy mold can grow and where it can grow. So to us, the bathroom is just that low-hanging fruit. So we knew that we wanted to have just a simple design like this, and unfortunately, we went up just finding a plug-in that can do it. Um, but the reality is it, it we did another, another page or something similar, and it can be done via JavaScript and CSS, but it's time consuming to actually go through. And so we went, we, we took the easy path of a, uh, of a plugin. Hmm. So I'm the, I'm a strong proponent of being able to do as many things as you can natively using our tools. So, um, I, I will take notes as to, uh, you know, whether we can implement something like this inside Thrive Architect. Uh, hopefully yep. we can, because it looks really cool. And I think people are going to like it at home. So, um, do you want to talk to me a little bit more about mold? Are you like, do you know anything about mold? I, I know a lot about mold. I'm not the mold expert of the company. I mean, from right. working here for almost five years now, I've, you know, I've learned a lot, but you know, the reality is 70% of homes in the U S or have some sort of mold, uh, you know, have had some sort of water event in their home. Right. And mold can grow in as quick as 24 to 48 hours. So if you had a water it, event in your home, Mold can grow quickly. So that's, cor- so that's the first thing. Right. And c- correct me if I'm wrong, but mold can get pretty dangerous, right? Mold can get extremely dangerous. We, we, we've seen all sorts of cases. We, we had one of our clients who was a former triathlete, and I could send you the video on this afterwards if you like. She was a former triathlete who ran tri- did triathlons. All of a sudden, she was living in a toxic home in Florida, got really sick got so sick to the point where she had a feeding tube put in. She couldn't eat God. it. Went to multiple wow. doctors. They, pres- they prescribed her all sorts of different things. They misdiagnosed her for a long time. Then she switched up. She actually went and saw a different type of doctor, a functional medicine doctor, who advised her to have her home tested for mold. She tested her home for mold. It came in off the charts with all sorts of different toxic molds. First thing that we did, we moved her out of the house moved her into a trailer on her front lawn within a week the feeding tube came out within two weeks she was quasi normal able to play with her kids again live a somewhat normal life this was someone who was bed bound and sadly was suicidal you know, wow mother of, i believe three young ch- children so th- the effects are there it's it's real the problem often is that people who are who have sensitivity to mold they it's not everyone so, for example, it could be a husband and wife living in a home, and the wife is drastically sick, but it does not impact the husband. And sadly, more often than not, it, it impacts females more than men uh, due to hormones. So hmm. that's a, it's an unfortunate thing, and it's one of those things where we have, you know, we've had people who 
their spouses have, have thought they're crazy. We've had people who their regular doctors have thought they're crazy. The reality is they're just, they're living in a toxic environment and they never know. And how, so how does people don't realize is that you know the average person takes about twenty thousand breaths per day, and according to the US EPA, ninety percent of most people's time is spent indoors. So do the math on that. You're breathing a lot. And people are breathing a lot indoors. So what's in your environment? It's, you know, on our, on our website, you know, it's the environment is one of the missing pieces that we see into overall health and wellness. You know, we see people who go out, they, they try to eat healthy. They, uh, you know, they eat non-GMO foods. They try to avoid processed foods or things like seed oils. They work out all the time. But yet they come home and they ignore the air that they're breathing and it's such an important vital function of human health that people just constantly ignore and the problem is is that it's it's i mean sometimes it's pretty obvious to see because sometimes you just see the mold but then other times it can be really hard right extremely more often more often than not people don't see it so we we had a very we had a famous celebrity in her home uh gwyneth paltrow who oh, wow. had this beautiful beautiful tub that was essentially in uh it was in a very large bathroom the bathroom had hardwood beautiful hardwood floors throughout she had no clue she got very sick from it and she got sick because every time she would come out of the bath she would drip water everywhere and the tub was not installed properly now superficially if you look around you saw nothing she saw nothing you know, her regular contractor said, hey, you're crazy. What's going on? She knew something was up. Now, mind you, this is also someone who would take, you know, I think she said she was taking a very long bath every single day. So she's <laughs> sitting there in a, in a humid environment, breathing this constantly. So when we ripped the floors up, that's when we found the mold. And it was aggressive. I'll leave it. It was very it was an aggressive. So and that's it. people don't realize because oftentimes when you when you see it, it's really bad. You know, it's, it's really, really bad. Right. And how complicated is it to solve the problem? I mean, you just said, like, you had to rip the floor apart. I mean, the problem with mold is that sometimes it involves a pretty nasty, like, uh, you know, f the fixing up of your house. Like, you got to, you got to. It is. It, it is. Yeah. It can get expensive, unfortunately, quickly. So the analogy that we always use a lot is that if you're taking a bath going back to the tub again for some reason if you're taking a bath and the tub is overflowing and the water's on you know what's the first thing you're going to do you're going you're to turn the water off most people in the mold industry don't try to turn the, the water off they don't address the root cause of what's causing water to spill out they'll just throw some towels down on the floor instead of actually addressing the root cause and that's a big issue is that people simply just ignore the root cause of mold, where it's coming from, and just try to gloss over, you know, they try to fix where the mold was without addressing the root cause. And if you do that, what's going to happen? Maybe that person will feel better for a short period of time, but it's going to come right back. It's going to come that's back. Often, that's what happens to us. Um, we've had multiple clients who've come to us. They didn't hire us from, from, the, from the beginning. Oh, you know, we went with someone local. It was a little bit more cheap. And... Unfortunately, what winds up happening is a lot of times they wind up coming back to us afterwards because their remediation died. God, okay. Man, I think this, this conversation is going to be a mastermind for people just to <laughs> try to be a little more, <laughs> a little more clean and at I'm home. Not, and I'm not, the, I'm not the mold expert. That, that's and you're not the expert. The yeah, yep. Would blow your mind on God, okay. Well, um, Scott, I have some good news. I am going to name you CEO of Thrive Themes for a day. And the cool thing is that you're going to have all of the money, all of the resources in this world to, uh, to be able to release a new plugin inside our suite of, of plugins, to add in a new feature inside one of our existing plugins. Like if you're CEO of Thrive Themes for a day, what is the one thing that you would um, add? So I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily add a plugin. Mm -hmm. I would just a few things. So the first, my first thing is is Thrive, you know, my favorite plugin is Thrive Quiz Builder. Okay. I use Thrive Quiz Builder on a site. It's a tremendous lead magnet for me. There's one major issue that I have with it, and it was quasi-addressed but not really addressed. The inability to go back on a question. Now, you guys have that functionality now, but 
you only have that functionality um, if you turn off auto advance. Hmm. So that that's a huge one for me. I, I because auto advance it, it cuts the time down drastically. So so for me, that's one big component is, is well, having a back button without auto advance with auto advance turned on. That's huge. Right. And then the other, the back end component is taking all the data that's collected from a quiz and being able to store it and send it out into, into segmented different things. So basically, you know, we're, we're a little bit limited with what we can do. So we have a very advanced um, Thrive quiz on, on the founder's website. So on the michaelurbino.com, we have a mold quiz. And essentially what it is, it's a series of questions that you can go through uh, answer and you get you get graded on and based on all the answers that determines your grade and determines the the likeliness that you may or may not have mold in your home hmm. so that's kind of the way that that works so we have it's probably 40 or so questions that, that go that we get um, but unfortunately the data we're unable to pass that data out right now into our CRM system yeah so a, an, a, a different uh, things I've tried that year. Gotcha. Uh, okay, so an enhanced back button and the ability to export uh, answers and uh, input from your quiz in a more efficient way. Okay, I'm I'm taking notes. 100%. Taking notes. Yeah. All right. That, that's a huge one to me. And then hmm. uh, I'll get I'll give you in just s some more advanced um, WooCommerce design options. I think you guys are missing the ball there with that. I think you guys can do a lot more giving people better customization options within WooCommerce. You have some stuff now and you can kind of see on our home clean shop um, we've made some a good amount of modifications but I think there's I think there's more to be made. Okay. I think I think Scott I think you I think you're going to be a happy man in the future. <laughs> uh, that's that's all I can say. All right. <laughs> okay. And then just to wrap it up here really quick, uh, I'd like doing a rapid a series of rapid fire questions just to get to know you a little bit better. Um, so I think you answered the first one, which is what is your favorite Thrive Suite tool? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Quiz Builder. That, you're the first person to say Quiz Builder, and that is making me kind of happy. Well, because people, it's it's a lead magnet. Right, it gets you more clients. We see tons and tons of leads off of it. Nice. It's a simple form, it's interactive, it's engaging. And if you do it right, and you have the capacity to do it right, people will finish your quiz. And if they, have a, they, if they see some sort of perceived value at the end, you will collect their data. Cool. Um, favorite productivity tool, if you have one? Um, for work, probably Slack. I mean, it, Slack. Just, it keeps us. It keeps our team constantly. Yeah. Wonderful. We yeah. use Slack here at Thrive. It's it's pretty pretty good. Um, do you use social media? Uh, me personally, yeah. I, I, my favorite social media is uh, is Twitter. Uh, <laughs> I'm not an active poster. You know, I'm uh, I'm unfortunately, and I'm going to contradict myself um, on some stuff here with that. But you know, I, to me, I value privacy a little bit, so I I try not to post too much on social media but to me i i find that i you know instagram bores me facebook is you know 2010 the political person inside you likes twitter <laughs> you know what my, my two platforms that, that i use the most are twitter and youtube okay and youtube there's so same much, there's so much education that you can get off of youtube and the same with twitter i mean it, they're, they're both for real tools and and to me i'd rather try to educate myself on stuff you know, on on different viewpoints, you know, whether or not it's political, educational, go down the line, um, you know, use one of those one of those platforms. I'm going to hit mute for one second, Tony. I, I can hear the helicopter. <laughs> okay. And um, the last question, I mean, sorry. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask you, is there an entrepreneur that that you look up to that insp inspires you? Honestly, there's a few. the 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 main one is right now is probably Joe Rogan. I think learning more about his story and what he's done and what he's been able to build to build is just tremendous. I mean, you have a guy who was, you know, wanted to be an MMA fighter and became a comedian and 
a podcaster and an entrepreneur and has built this this brand it's, it's remarkable to me you know i mean i was gonna say i was gonna say elon for a second but honestly i i think joe rogan is what he's done is absolutely remarkable and and how he's stood his ground with whatever he believes in you know he's had people on his podcast that have have controversial takes he didn't back down when people you know demanded he get pulled down from platforms or try to censor him he held his own so i i, I respect the heck out of him for that Cool. Um, a movie that everyone should watch. That's a tough one. I mean, what, yeah. what are we looking to do here with the movie? Are we looking to... I mean, I, I'm... Could be anything. It, it drives my wife crazy. I don't like to watch TV. And if I watch TV, it's... it's. I'll either watch movies that I've seen before. She has to <laughs> drag me kicking and screaming to watch something new. Um, All right. So why don't you tell me the movie that you've seen the most amount of times in your life? The most amount of times in my life, that's a tough one. There's a handful of movies, if they're on, I'll always watch them. Um, Godfather, okay. Ghostbusters, Anchorman. Okay. Um, Anchorman. <laughs> yeah, go down the line. Ah. Like, there's, just, there's, there's all sorts of stuff. I don't, I don't have one that's like my go-to movie. I feel like it like ebbs and flows with the seasons and what uh, what is being streamed online. So. Sounds good. All right, and as a marketing expert, the last question that I have for you is, is there a marketing trend that has you super thrilled or excited? Well, you know, everyone's probably gonna say AI in some capacity. Mm -hmm. I feel like most people will say AI and not have the faintest clue how to be using it. Um, it to me, AI is the biggest development in technology since probably since the iPhone it's I think it has it, it's changing everything in this world that we see whether or not it's creating images videos content um, but to me AI I view AI right now in my role as a functionality tool you know I can take a podcast that that the founder of our company is on list it as a private YouTube video dump it into into AI, have a full transcription, have it extract different, basically talking points that could be hooks for the video, go through all these different things that would have taken a member of my team in the past, you know, half a day to do. It's just a, it's a production tool that is tremendous. So, so for me, embracing embracing AI, using AI properly, um, is is the biggest trend. You know, and if I get one more spam email that comes to me that says, I hope this email finds you well. I'm going to lose it. You know, <laughs> automatic delete. You know, it's, it's come on, ChatGPT, mix it up a little bit. That, that's one of the, the issues of ChatGPT. And that's what I'm saying with people who don't know how to use it properly. If you don't right. know how to use it properly, your output is going to be trash like that. Trash goes in, trash goes out. Trash, yep. Garbage in, garbage out. It's the old, right. uh, the old development saying. Gotcha. Well, uh, Scott, it's been a pleasure. I know that if people want to find out a little bit more about home cleanse and, and how mold is or could be affecting their homes, they can go to homecleanse.com. Is there a place where people can follow you personally if they want to follow you? Not really. I, I mean, you know, my, my Twitter and my Instagram are, are out there and both public. Unfortunately, I don't post much. Send me a DM. You know, if you send me a DM, I'll probably see it and I'll respond to you if you have any questions. Um, you know, I'm in one of the Facebook groups for Thrive as well, too. Shoot me a note there. I'd be happy to, to respond as well. But yeah, that's, that's basically it. Well, man, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today. No problem. Thank you, Tony. I love having these conversations with Thrive Themes customers because not only do I get to learn a little bit more about companies like HomeCleanse, but it allows me to talk to you guys, our, our customers, and get to know a little bit more about how you're using our tools, what things you want to see implemented inside our uh, ecosystem of plugins. And um, yeah, if you want to talk to me, if you want to sit down on Zoom uh, and just uh, chit chat for 20, 25 minutes, uh, be sure to fill out the form in the description box uh, that I'm linking to. It's been a pleasure. You can learn more about home cleanse over at homecleanse.com. And yeah, I truly appreciate your time. Hopefully you enjoyed this conversation. See you soon. Bye.